Erev Tov, I'm Stephen ben Danoon and you're watching Israeli News Live. We have a special guest here tonight on Israeli News Live and that's Giulio Miotti. Giulio Miotti is an Italian journalist and author of two books, his latest book called The New Shoah and his earlier book, The Vatican Against Israel. Uh, his articles have appeared, have appeared in the Wall Street Journal, the Jerusalem Post, and he's a regular contributor for Israel National News, or better known as Arut Shiva. Uh, there's many other uh, uh, articles that he has written and publications all over the world, and just an incredible uh, writer and a staunch supporter of the Israeli people. And as far as I know, Mr. Miotti is not Jewish. But uh, he certainly has recognized that the Vatican has an agenda against Israel. And so without further ado, let me introduce to you Giulio Miotti. What, what, what are your fears? Uh, based on the article, I have a great fears for the future of the Jewish people that you wrote in Arut Shiva. Uh, uh, two things. The first is a resurgent anti-Semitism in Europe, um, which is already the biggest cemetery of the Jewish people in the world because of the Holocaust, and is now getting again stronger and stronger Europe's hatred for the Jewish people. And uh, you can see from the what happened in Toulouse a couple of years ago when a rabbi and three children were killed in front of a Jewish school in Toulouse, in the southern of France. And uh, nothing happened. Nothing happened in the public opinion, in the, in the political leaders, in the so-called, what the British call the chattering classes, the intellectuals, the writers, the newspapers. There, there was no remorse, no remorse for for um, a Muslim immigrant, a French citizen who killed four innocent Jews. And you can see every day in the, in the, in the chronicle of, uh, from Europe, uh, Jews attacked in the streets, um, stones and uh, firebombs against the synagogues and the Jewish centers, uh, blood libels against the Jewish people in the front pages of the newspapers, of the biggest newspapers like Guardian, Le Monde, Frankfurt and Argemeine Zeitung. When you have uh, the Nobel uh, Prizes in literature like Gunter Grass saying that Israel is preparing the extermination of the Iranian people, so reversing the story of Iranian preparing the ground for a war against the Jewish people and um, scapegoating against the Jews uh, in, the, in the Middle East. This is, what, this is why I fear for the Jewish people. And also I fear for the Jewish people because the uh, 20 years have passed since the uh, signing of the Oslo Agreement which was a political suicide committed by Zach Rabin and Shimon Peres and the leaders of that time. And nothing has changed since then. Not only nothing has changed since then, but also the political right adopted the same, uh, the same platform, which is based on the um, division, uh, partition of the land, which was, was already divided 60 years ago. And, uh, and they are now talking again like, about retreating and disengaging and uh, uh, abandoning the historic and earth land of the Jewish people, which is the land of the Bible. What happened in Gaza with the uh, Gush Katif is the turning point when uh, 8,000 uh, 8, Jews were deported from their homes and uh, by fellow Jews, and uh, I know what I'm saying is very traumatic, but it's a ghetto mentality, you know. Jews, uh, Jews uh, 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 forcing other Jews from their homes. And, uh, and it was incredible because uh, Gaza was turned into a terror state, and uh, nothing happened. 50,000 missiles were fired on Israel. 
uh, Israel retreated from the southern of Lebanon, and that it's an Iranian proxy terror state. And they are now talking again, and even if Judea and Samaria are different, of retreating from the balconies of Tel Aviv, as this region is known for his strategic and uh, uh, position, you know, for the security of the Jewish people. So, anti-Semitism in Europe, uh, an immense hatred in the Islamic world for the Jews, going back to the time of Muhammad and the uh, Jewish tribes in the desert in the south in Saudi Arabia, and now again, uh, now also a kind of anti-Semitism cram- coming from the Israeli mainstream. You know, uh, there there is a total. Re- uh, Total disregard of uh, Jewish life in the Israeli press. For the, the no, there is no mention for the stories of the victims of the Second Intifada. They were treated in a kind of moral equivalence of with the Palestinians, Arabs who lost their lives in the Israeli operation. You know, so I think it's a it's same phenomenon. So a kind of self hatred of the Jewish people, even even if the majority of the Jews living in Israel are against these policies, but there is a kind of oligarchy, a kind of mentality of appeasement, which I think it's uh, very, uh, very dangerous. I couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, uh, Mioti, I, I, I personally know some of the people in the Mossad here, and um, I was talking with one individual in particular because of the government. Uh, I really, I hate to say it like this, but I consider Shimon Perez like the son of Ahab. Uh, he has betrayed our people, and uh, he has sold our nation out to the Vatican. And, uh, and yet I've actually, uh, as strong as some of the statements that I have made myself, there, uh, there is a Catholic group in South America that wrote an article uh, very favorable to one of the news broadcasts that I posted because they realize that uh, the things that are going on in the Vatican is very much uh, anti-Semitic. And, um, and, and one thing I'd like to ask you about and, uh, on, on the same uh, level of the anti-Semitism rising in Europe, one of the things that was said to me by the, by the people there in the Mossad is that, uh, well, two things. One, they said that the, a lot of the political regimes in Israel, is the way it was put, um, are disconnected to the people themselves. Uh, they're basically puppets uh, that, that are playing the charade in the background. And secondly, though, one of the things that they mentioned that was very uh, concerning to me is that what we're seeing happening in Europe now, the anti-Semitism and the things that are happening there, is coming to America. It will be coming to America next. And, you know, they would love to see more of the Jewish people from America uh, take heed to that and even to return home. That was one of the statements they made to me. Yeah, it's the, it's the Yerida. It's the, uh, it's the opposite of Aliyah. It's the exodus from Israel. There is a, um, a kind of war between the diaspora and the and Israel as an entity, as the future of the Jewish people. And uh, it's, a, it's the war between assimilation, so the Jews losing, losing their identity in the United States, but also in Europe with the intermarriages, secularization, and the, and the fact that, that in Israel assimilation is impossible. Even if you see in the numbers, it's the, it's the future of the Jewish people because it's assimilation, it's the first step for the, of the, it's the it was called a kind of non-violent holocaust, you know. Right. Uh, a, few de- a few days ago, the rabbis from Hungary uh, reported on the rates of assimilation in Europe, which was uh, terrible. 85% of Jews are assimilating. And this is what they want, you know, the many Jewish leaders. They want the, the Jews losing uh, what they have, which is 4,000 years of tradition of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the, the Bible, you know, the, what, what, Jew, what Jewish means. And they want the, the, the famous Karl Marx uh, um, position. You can 
overcome antisemitism by destroying the Jewish identity. So they hope to be accepted as, uh, as guests in the democracies, but in fact it, the opposite is producing, which is more hatred, because antisemitism is connected with assimilation. It's, uh, it's, it's the same story from the Dreyfus case in France, where um, Theodor Herzl was a journalist, and he saw the hatred for that Jewish captain in the period was the Jews were integrating at um, an immense level in the France of that time. So that's what is important. It's the, it's, it, there is a war, a tension, a radical tension between diaspora and Israel. And people like uh, Ram Emanuel and the, all the other assimilated Jews who are, um, you know, uh, advise, the, the advisors of President Obama are, are a perfect example of what I'm saying, you know. And they cannot, they can, they cannot accept because... It's, uh, it means re renouncing to, to what they are, you know, it's a, it's a conflict, it's a permanent conflict. Exactly, exactly. In, in your book that you wrote, Vatican Against Israel, you, you, make, you speak about the anti-Semitism that's per, uh, perpetrated by the Vatican uh, or the Catholic Church against Israel. Yeah. Can you kind of elaborate on that? Uh, okay, let's put it this way. Uh, the Vatican formally recognized the state of Israel in uh, 1993. So, uh, it, it, uh, the Catholic Church had to wait 50 years after the Holocaust even to formally accept um, a kind of diplomatic uh, channel to be open with the, with the Jewish state. Why? Where is the scandal? Why so many years? Even if Egypt under President Sadat was much more sympathetic with the state of Israel uh, 20 years before, uh, Jordan before, and why the Vatican had to wait so long to recognize, even to recognize, to accept, to pronounce the name of Israel? The question is that the Vatican cannot accept the return uh, to the Holy Land of the Jewish exiles, you know, and it's uh, the after the 1967 war, um, the, the state of Israel was portrayed by the Catholic Church as a colonialist oppressor, as uh, and the, the 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 roots of the conflict was told it is 1948, the very existence of the Jewish people, not the conquering the liberation of Judea and Samaria. And since then, Palestinian national aspirations have been celebrated by the Vatican, while Jewish aspirations have been denigrated. And all in all the wars waged by the Arabs seeking to whip out the Jewish state have been characterized by the Vatican as, as aggressive wars provoked by Israel. This is what happened during the Second Intifada when the uh, Arab terrorist uh, uh, took a shelter in the, um, the Church of Nativity in Bethlehem, and uh, Israel uh, sized and um, sized the, ch the church in the proximity, and uh, in the Vatican made every kind of effort to portray the Jews as the aggressors in a kind of new, uh, you know, new, a new, new cycle of. Uh, uh, crucifixion, you know, with the Palestinian Arabs as the new Jesus and the Jews as the new Herod, you know, the Jews as the new Romans, killing the babies, you know, that's the mythology. And today the problem is that there are, there is some talk, there is some dialogue between uh, the Catholic Church, the three popes, Pope Wojtyla, John Paul, Pope Benedict, and now Pope Francis with the Jewish people. They talk with the rabbis, they participate to interfaith dialogue, um, they commemorate the Holocaust, but they, they divided themselves radically with the living state of Israel. And the, in, every time of, in every time of crisis, they have collaborated with Israel's enemies. In every time, during the war against Hezbollah in 2005, the Secretary of State of that time 
of the Vatican said that Israel uh, violated the sovereignty of Lebanon. During the war in Gaza in 2009, the, uh, many Vatican officials said that Gaza is a con concentration camp. Um, uh, we, so the Jews are the new, the new Nazis, you know. And uh, this is the story. They participated with the Iranians during the Darban II uh, conference in Geneva. Uh, where uh, President Ahmadinejad slammed the Jews in, in front of the world, and the Vatican didn't work out as the European, even the European Union needed. The Vatican stood then and in silence accepted the, the speech uh, of that uh, anti-Semite uh, president. So, which is the, uh, which is the, 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 the logic of... Uh, uh, of saying that the Israel has a good uh, relation with the Vatican. It's just, uh, you know, tourism. They have um, uh, both an interest, an economic interest in attracting people coming to visit Jerusalem. They want the taxes uh, question because of the property of the churches. But when you go to the deepest, uh, deeper questions, uh, there is a, a, a there is a um, there is an abyss between the two, you know, because the, since the Holocaust, the, the Catholic Church never accepted the, the Jewish sovereignty over the Holy Land, the fact that the Jews controlled and unified the city of Jerusalem, and they gave uh, freedom of religion to uh, all the minorities, Muslim, Christians, uh, churches are flourishing, but they, they cannot accept it because it, the question is the question of Zionism. And Zionism means for the church um, a scandal, a, do, a, a scandal for the dogma of the Catholic Church. In that, in that regards there then, uh, do you believe that there is a hidden agenda that the Vatican has uh, against Israel? But it's not so hidden, you know, because they, they are saying that they want to divide against the city of Jerusalem. Um, uh, before, between, between 1948 and 1967, in the 70s, they said they want to, uh, a corpus separatum, which means uh, a divided body for, the, con for the, govern the government of the city of Jerusalem. So they, they, they never accepted, even the Western Jerusalem. When Pope Pius came to, uh, to the Holy Land in 1964, he spent just three, four hours in the Israeli territory, and he refused to call Mr. Shazar, the president of that time of Israel, as Mr. President of Israel, just Mr. Shazar. Exactly. And, and uh, he refused to meet the rabbis, and uh, he just went to Megiddo, he went to talk with the Jordanians, with the Palestinian Arabs, but they even re he refused to even to, to, to recognize the pre-1967 state of Israel. So the question is not the existence of Israel uh, beyond the green line, so called. You know, for them, what is intolerable is that the Jews control the holy sites. And so today, one of the major policies is, is, is around the Temple Mount. When the Pope will come to Israel next May, he will visit the Harbite, the Temple Mount, with the Sheikh, with the Palestinian judge, and not with the, with the rabbis, not with the Jews. He will not try to please everybody. He will, he will be there with the Arabs. He will, be, he will visit the Western Wall, which, which, which is a kind of symbol of what is remnant of the past for them. No? So every pope will, will come to the, to, the, to the Western world. But that's enough. You know? Then a, a brief visit to Yad Vashem to commemorate the dead, the dead Jews of 70 years ago. And that's all. Nothing. And then he will be there for the, in Bethlehem for the, for the so-called refugees and the right of return. So the, politically... He will, be, he will be in Israel for the Arabs with some kind of moments of uh, prayer or empathy with the Jewish people, but very, very few. Exactly. And there's several things, and I, and I know we're getting short on time, but let me just quickly ask you, uh, the tomb of David, do you know whether or not that this has been made official or not? I know there was no referendum here in Israel. 
uh, when the Israelis, uh, next thing we know, we find out that uh, the tomb of David, uh, or actually the upper room, but it's the site of the tomb of David is being, uh, the yes. Pope is being given a seat there. And, uh, and I'll ask the other question for you as well. Uh, Gershon Solomon, who's a good friend of mine, he had, he had mentioned to me, and we talked about this many years ago, but we'll be meeting again here this week. Uh, he had told me that he knew for a fact from friends that have, that have eyewitnessed and seen that the menorah from the Second Temple and other artifacts are actually in the catacombs of the Vatican. And <laughs> so I would be curious to know your it's response a on It's that. a mystery. It's a mystery. I don't know. It's a mystery. I know. I know the same story. The menorah was uh, stolen from Jerusalem during the Romans' time and was... Uh, and it should be now in Rome. We don't know. We really don't know. What we know is that they want a seat in Mount Zion and to control the cenacle where Jews, where Jesus um, spent his last uh, night in Jerusalem before being killed. And uh, it's where King, uh, King, uh, the King David tomb is also, and with a yeshiva. And... Uh, so they want that seat to control the hills in front of the Temple Mount. And uh, they, they want to use that spot as a kind of uh, propaganda spot against the Jewish people uh, to make uh, a Christian, uh, to use for Christian pilgrims. And uh, it will be used also um, as a tool for the PLO, for the Palestinian uh, organization because the Franciscans, the the Terra Santa Custodia, which is should uh, you know hold the uh, you know to to control the Christian sites, is very very close to the Arab uh, Arab leaders, and they are just one thing you know in Bethlehem the bishops, uh, the clergy. And if you, if you remind what happened during the Second Intifada with the Church of Nativity, most of the, of the clergy, of the Catholic clergy in Bethlehem, supported the terrorists. And the, and the major of the Franciscan, St. Francis order, which controlled the, should control the Mount Zion spot, said that the uh, terrorists in the church were like the Jews sheltered in the churches during the Second World War. Wow. Well, yeah, that's the story. It's, it's a fact. You it, know. It, exactly. You can, I you, mean, it's a fact. You can, they can say everything they want. They can say that they have a very good relation with both Jews and Arabs. They pray for the two-state solution, that they want a peaceful agreement, uh, that they want the coexistence of the two people. But the fact is that in every moment which is important, you will remember, and uh, which is in the time of crisis, they always stand against the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Exactly. That's exactly right. Well, Giulio Miotti, my friend, uh, I cannot thank you enough uh, for coming on, being with us, uh, for your work in exposing the Vatican's agenda uh, for Jerusalem. Uh, it's definitely a holy work that, that you're doing. And for, for those that will be listening to this broadcast here later, uh, I, can, I can't encourage you enough uh, to get uh, Giulio Miotti's book. Uh, actually, he's got more than one, but of course, uh, my favorite is uh, his book where he exposes the Vatican. And, um, and his website is www.giuliomiotti.com. Dot com, and that'll appear at the bottom of your screen where you can see that. And uh, yeah, I thank you very much, Steve, for your time and for for your work. Eh? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. God thank bless you. you, my friend. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you for watching tonight, Israeli News Live. I'm Stephen Bendenun, your host. And good evening, and God bless you. Baruch Hashem.